our first speaker today, Tom Coleman, uh, probably doesn't need this introduction. He's, uh, he runs Percolate Studios, uh, which is the group that brought you Verso, which is in the App Store. Um, he's one of the authors of Discover Meteor. And some of you have picked up Discover Meteor shirts today. So you guys are rocking it. Um, and today, Tom is going to give you a two-year retrospective of his, uh, of his time developing apps with Meteor. So real time flies, two years with Meteor. Tom Coleman. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, so as, as Jade said, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my and our history with, with Meteor and um, how, I guess, developing Meteor apps has changed um, over the, the period of the two years that we've been doing it. So as Jade said, my name's Tom Coleman. I uh, work at, with Percolate Studio and uh, wrote the book with Sasha. So. This is a talk about evolution, about how things have changed. Um, so it actually starts more than two years ago, in November 2011, when 010 of, it wasn't even called Meteor at that point, Skybreak appeared. I didn't, even, I didn't know about it at that point, but I guess that's where the story starts. Um, in January 2012, the name Meteor was officially coined. And what were we doing? Well, we didn't know about it. Uh, we were building an app called Bindle, which was a Rails app. We were a Rails shop. Um, we loved Rails. We loved Ruby. But we kind of built this app, Bindle, which was really front-end heavy. We were doing, it wasn't quite a single page app, but we were doing a lot of stuff in JavaScript. And we're finding it quite frustrating constantly moving between Rails and JavaScript. We also had this chat component, which wasn't at all real time. Uh, as a startup, we didn't really have time to do it. We could probably have done it with Rails, made it real time, but it wasn't a priority. So it was kind of a crappy UX. Meanwhile, in early 2012, while we were doing this, Meteor was barreling through versions. I looked up the version history, and I got through quite a few in a few months. But eventually, we heard about Meteor. We wanted to give it a try. So we decided to build a little example app in it. So we had an idea for League, which was a sports uh, management app for sort of small uh, teams. And um, so we went ahead and we built a little app with Meteor called League. It was kind of cool. Uh, it had Facebook integration. Um, it had some animations, as you saw. It had a little date picker here. And it was really fun. We really enjoyed it. Uh, we thought it was great. But some things were pretty hard. Uh, doing the authentication with Facebook was a pain. Um, using that date picker just didn't really work properly. Um, the transitions were a major challenge. Um, and also, we built a little router package, which we wanted to share with everyone. But there wasn't really a way to do it. So the next thing that happened with Meteor and us, or me personally, is Meteorite. Um, I got together with a guy called Mike Bannister, and we built a little package manager for Meteor. Meteor didn't have a package manager, so we just built one. Uh, it enabled us to share our router packages and our other packages with each other in the world. Uh, in August 2012, 040 came out with Spark, which, although it didn't completely solve the jQuery UI problem, it made it a lot easier. And it made a lot of templating stuff much, much easier. So when it came time to build Atmosphere, which was the website with the package repository for the packages that we built with Meteorite, it was a lot easier. In fact, building the Atmosphere app was pretty straightforward in many ways. And it was a pretty straightforward app. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys recognize this awesome UI. Um, <laughs> Atmosphere was um, lived in this form for a year and a half. Um, and it did the job while there were a couple of hundred packages. When it got to 1,300, it started to be a bit silly to have a list of all the packages that existed published to every client. One thing that was difficult with Atmosphere was um, validating the data that came in, making sure that people weren't publishing the 
wrong fields on their packages and stuff. Um, and that uh, was a challenge that we found. But in general, it was a lot easier with Spark. Um, in, 2000 and, in October 2012, 050 of Meteor came out. And this was a huge deal. So when Meteor first appeared, there were a lot of people criticizing it, saying Meteor is not secure. Um, the other big criticism was that Meteor doesn't scale. But Meteor is not secure because it publishes all the data to the clients, and the clients can make essentially Mongo calls um, in the browser. And so when 050 came out, really the tables were turned, because now authentication was built into the framework. There was no way around it. Doing something like a Facebook integration, which we'd slaved over, suddenly became trivial one line of code, which was cool. <laughs> um, Still, we were struggling with structure of the apps as well. And in November 2012, I got together with Sasha, who I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And we built a little app called Telescope. Sasha was really interested in building a Hacker News clone that was real time. Media was a great technology to do it with. And so we built um, this sort of um, reusable app called Telescope, which you can use. It's open source. You can use it for any kind of um, chat site, that you, uh, sorry, social news site that you like, where you'd like to share links with each other and chat about them. And it was pretty cool. We could use packages for it. Um, we started to have an idea about a lot of the ways to solve um, some of the patterns that we didn't really know how to do early on with Meteor. And um, it was pretty fun building it. Um, we had some interesting user interface challenges, like how to deal with reordering lists when the reordering potentially happens from someone else, how to communicate that to the user, how to deal with new comments appearing in a feed without disturbing the comments that the user is currently reading. And we had some fun playing with that. There were some things that were still difficult, um, doing, doing the publications and doing the pagination of data was a challenge. But I guess we learned a lot by building Telescope. And we decided to write a book about it because a lot of people were asking us how to do various things, and we were answering the same questions over and over again. So in uh, May of last year, almost a year ago exactly, uh, we launched the Discover Media book and um, shared what we knew with the world. And that was great. Um, in August 2013, 065, which was a fairly significant release that didn't get its own version number, a meteor came out, which changed package namespacing. And this was quite a big problem. A lot of um, packages broke, and it was a, a bit of an issue, but it was a hurdle that had to be passed. So that was worth mentioning. In September 2013, uh, Percolate Studio released uh, first a sort of big media app, which was Verso. Uh, which is a mobile app that we built with our partners uh, at Learnology. And it was a phone gap app, so it runs in the phone browser. Not in the browser, it runs in, in an app in the App Store. Um, it had a lot of uh, complicated transitions. It ran smoothly on phones. It uh, does a lot of stuff. And uh, we demoed it about six months ago here at DevShop. Um, and yeah, it was a really, really successful experience. It was a great pleasure building a much more large, complicated app in Meteor. We really had to solve a few things along the way, but we did, and we were very happy with the result. Um, the challenges were, of course, achieving the mobile user experience, um, which is tricky in HTML in general, and Meteor being uh, a web technology, that's obviously what you need to do. But we started to find solutions to the problems of structure and validations, and it was really interactive. Obviously, the real-time nature of the app made it great for students and teachers. We found that students and teachers were using it in a way that it wasn't expected. They were using it to chat to each other in class, which wasn't really what it was for, but the real-time nature of it made that fun for them. So it was a cool little app. And it still is. It still exists. <laughs> uh, 
In December last year, 070 of Meteor came out, and this was a huge deal. Offblog. Offblog totally changed the game on media and scaling. Until that point, the worries about media scaling were semi-justified. We didn't actually run into problems with our apps, but we could have, I suppose. Um, certainly, certainly was something um, that people were justifiably worried about. But I think with Oplog, we've seen amazing performance improvements, and the problem is more or less solved. Um, <coughs> In March 2014, uh, we at Percolate got together to um, improve Atmosphere, which the old dated user interface had been sitting around for a long time based on the fact that we kind of thought it was going to go away. Um, so we decided it was time for an overhaul. And we wanted to demonstrate a few um, cool things that you could do um, on the mobile web, on the web, I mean. Um, what you could do with HTML, and some cool uh, reactive things that you could do. And we really wanted to explore the way that packages can be uh, discovered. Um, so we built Atmosphere, the new version, uh, which is very much a work in progress. There are a lot of features that we are planning. Um, Atmosphere, you know, was on Blaze at this point. Well, Blaze hasn't been released yet in my story, but we were using a pre-release. Um, using jQuery UI packages, using um, third-party plugins was completely trivial. Um, we had the structure of the app really worked out. We had the way to do publications really worked out. We had pagination worked out. And all in all, it was a very smooth process building the app. Um, in March, Blaze was actually released. And Blaze is a real game changer because it really helps Meteor integrate with other JavaScript libraries. Um, all of a sudden, Meteor plays nice. And um, it's really a lot easier to build complicated user interfaces leveraging other people's front end code. Finally, uh, just last month, we uh, launched the beta of Meeting Hero, an app that we built with our partners at um, Heroic. Meeting Hero is an app to be used in meetings um, for recording things like agenda items and decisions. Um, it is very much real time, uh, fun as you type real time. Um, and thanks to Blaze, thanks to Meteor, um, the in-meeting experience is pretty cool. You can drag items between lists. You can see who's typing. You can watch them type. And uh, you can be way more productive in meetings. So well, what's the point of the story? The point of the story is we've come a very long way. When we started and we built League, it was fun. We love building apps with Meteor. Um, getting real time for free was awesome. Only having to work in one language and having the nice APIs that Meteor gives you was incredible. But there were a lot of rough edges. And perhaps the story isn't completely finished. Perhaps the line should continue on to the right. But uh, I think we're at a point now where the pros massively outweigh the cons. And so many things have become so much easier that it's really a constant pleasure building apps with Meteor. So I'll just skip that. So what's next? Well, we know the big feature that our Meteor development group are working on before 1.0 is packaging. We'll finally get rid of Meteorite, the little hacky <coughs> node script that me and Mike built almost two years ago. Um, We'll finally have a way for packages to report which versions of Meteor they work with. We'll have a proper way of updating dependencies and not having to update them all. Um, and we'll have a package server that is way more reliable and hosted by someone whose job it is to look after it. So that's going to be great. I think it's going to really help people share packages. We hope with Atmosphere to make it a lot easier for people to find packages. And the other big feature that we're sort of working on at the moment and perhaps will make its way into core is animation support 
think it's really important, as you've seen with our apps, we really make heavy use of transitions, we make heavy use of CSS um, animation and transitions, and we'd like to make further use of SVGs and animating things around to really achieve that native-like feel um, on, on mobile browsers and just to bring the web experience to the next level. So I think um, there's a lot that Meteor could do to help with that. Thanks very much. All right, uh, questions? I have a question. Oh, is, uh, is Meeting Hero something that, uh, that people can use right now? Uh, it's in private beta, so you can go and sign up um, to get on the waiting list. Um, but uh, apart from that, yes. <laughs> Will you be doing a uh, adding to the Discover Media Hero book? Uh, so what you added with Media Hero? Will you do like an open source project version of that, or like you did with Telescope? Um, so the question was, will we be adding to the book with what we've learned from Meeting Hero, and we'll be making some code open source and available? So um, I guess we'd, we'd definitely like to share that knowledge. Um, Telescope was built from the beginning as an open source app, so it was very easy to sort of rip parts out of it and make Microscope out of it, which was the, book, the app that the book was built off. Um, Meeting Hero, for instance, is a, a, not an open source project, it's a client project, but um, we'll certainly be expanding the book, we'll certainly be adding more chapters, we'll certainly be um, adding more content, I think, as, as Meteor moves past 1.0, so a lot of that will come through. I'm not sure exactly what code will appear, probably just more microscope code. So the question was on mobile, do you need a constant connection to the net or can you um, use the app uh, completely without a connection? The answer is much closer to the first than the second. It, it sort of work, uh, it sort of kind of works without an internet connection in that if you're on a given screen, you can kind of move around, but if you ever need more data or try and write to the database, it's not gonna work. So there's no sort of concept of a local database um, that is kind of like a cache of the real database. Um, I know that there are, there's been a, a long running project working on that and I think that's the sort of thing that will make its way into core eventually and then that will make the mobile experience on Meteor that much better but I think we're a way away from seeing that. I have another question. Yeah. Um, how did how did you make the, uh, the animations in your slides? <laughs> you know, you'd have to ask Dom about that. I'm not sure. He's not even listening. <laughs> uh, he's a keynote expert. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? All right. Well, if you haven't gotten your Discover Media shirt on your way in, uh, we have them in the, lo in the lobby. And, uh, and we'll be taking a a bit of a break um, until 7.30, which is when our next talk will be. All right, so we have bathrooms here and right behind that wall and in the lobby, and also feel free to grab beverages that are up here, so. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>